guest today is Nick Jackson. Nick, how are you? I'm very well, David. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I'm thank really you. looking forward to today. Me too. What do you do for a living? Well, I work as a, oh, well, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I work as a developer advocate for a company called HashiCorp. So my kind of primary role is trying to distill all of my industry knowledge and then the kind of knowledge of our tooling and then apply that to to people are trying to use it so you know helping people out with patterns and practices as well as the really sort of the technical features of of the various HashiCorp tools oh let's see if we could do that in 30 minutes or less that'll be a challenge <laughs> uh we were talking so we met at kubecon in chicago last week you came over from um uh, somewhere in europe i can't remember where you live yeah london yeah yeah london and um the uh, and I know HashiCorp has a lot of products, but we were talking about uh, one that addresses zero trust. And can we just talk yeah. about you know what do we mean when we say zero trust? Yeah, I, I mean zero trust is a kind of methodology that, that I think folks have to apply to to application development. It's it's about taking consideration for all of your network traffic, all of your secrets, and and really kind of wrapping up the applications in in a number of different layers to. Let, let, let's be honest, make it as difficult as possible for an attacker to, to, to compromise one of your systems. Uh, so, so we've got console, which helps with the um, network security via sort of service mesh, but, but also the, the tool we were talking about is, is Vault, which is a more sort of um, a secrets management tool, secrets management Swiss army knife, if you would. <laughs> uh, so when we talk about secrets, what specifically are we referring to? So anything like an API key, a uh, username or a password, uh, your database credentials, your Azure credentials, um, you know, anything which which you don't want to kind of leak. I mean, it, secrets can also kind of be a little bit more comprehensive than that. So if you think about like personally identifiable data, so for example, mm -hmm. in the European Union, if you hold information on me as, a, uh, as an individual, and that information leaks, then you are liable to, to, to sort of GDPR. So my information, my personal information could actually also be, be considered secret. Hmm. Okay. And, and it's a uh, HashiCorp Vault that handles right. those. Right. Talk a little bit about that. What are the features of HashiCorp Vault? So the, well, the features are expanding all of the time, but at a okay. primary concern, you can kind of do basic secrets management. So that is your, your kind of your your key value. Now, with Vault, where I think we we kind of try to do is we, we try to make the access to those secrets very very granular, because there are varying different applications, individuals across the entire of the organization. So so the the kind of yes, you've got the capability to store your your data in an encrypted method, but we provide access to that in a very very granular way. So it's it's kind of access management as well from the sense that. You know, you could use an application service principle to be able to access a particular secret. Or as me as an individual, I can log in via LDAP uh, using my ADFS account, and I can get access to maybe some different secrets. Mm. So that that's kind of the, the, the basic premise. But but where, where we we sort of look beyond that is we look at a secret as, as something which Ideally, a secret should be something which is, you know, which changes quite often because it's it's always possible to leak a secret. So dynamic secrets are something which Vault does very well. So things like your database, if you if you've got your your kind of your your managed Postgres system in in Azure, the the username and passwords for that can be dynamically generated by Vault with a, a sort of a short time to live, mm. or your your Azure user accounts. Um, like all, all sorts of, of things really like like that to kind of try and build a, a real sort of comprehensive approach to to managing your your, your secrets for your apps. Um, and how do I access these secrets from my application? So there's a number of different ways. Like, I mean, from a, a sort of a, you can do it through code. So the first thing is that, you know, you could, you could just use the API. So if everything around Vault is built around a RESTful API, mm -hmm. but I, I think that's a, a slightly uncommon approach. I think what people normally do is take like a template-based approach. So for example, we have a, a, um, a, a tool which is built in Vault called Vault Agent. And what Vault Agent will do 
is automatically authenticate to to Vault using, say, your um, machine identity in, in Azure or your, your Kubernetes service account. And then you can generate a configuration file containing your secrets. Now that you know that could be a, um, a sort of a, a, an X509 certificate and private key that you're going to use to secure the transport, or your dynamic database credential, or your, or your static secret. And that that's kind of, I suppose, the the most common way because it gives you the most flexibility. It kind of takes all of the the heavy lifting. But if you're using a pure Kubernetes solution, then again, there's another two different methods. You can use the Vault controller, which will automatically inject secrets into your applications using a sort of a template. Or if you want to take a, a very kind of pure, I'm just living in Kubernetes world and, and I, I don't want to think about anything else, you can use the Vault operator and the Vault operator will synchronize secrets from Vault and, and just kind of store those as, as Kubernetes secrets, which you can just consume in the, the standard way. Oh, so it just, it um, you set up the synchronization and whenever I change it in Vault, it automatically gets updated as a Kubernetes secret. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then if you're, if you're mounting your secrets as volumes, then of course the, the, the secret, you know, Kubernetes will rewrite that to your, uh, to your, your secrets path. The, the alternative approach is that the, the vault operator can also restart your pods. Uh, you know, I guess it just depends how your, your kind of your application is um, reading secrets. What we want to do is we want to kind of make it as flexible as possible. So you okay. need to make the minimum application changes in an ideal world, zero application changes to be able to consume secrets from vault. Got it. Okay. Um, I haven't used vault before, but I've used Azure key vault and yeah. many of the features you mentioned are available in Azure Key Vault, what are, what are the major differences between the two products? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think primarily this is a good one to address. So I think if you just need static secrets in a single cloud, then more often than not, using something like Azure Key Vault is, is absolutely the way to go. It's going to give you, you know, it's, you don't need to maintain any software or you don't need to use HCP or anything like that. Um, but the thing is, what we're trying to do with Vault is we're trying to kind of look at the the total kind of security or secrets management. So things like you you know your dynamically generated uh, database usernames, or, or you're using Terraform and you want to be able to dynamically generate Azure credentials to be able to you know apply your infrastructure. Or I think more commonly, if you have like a um, a multi cloud approach, you know it could be a sort of a hybrid approach where it's on prem and some Azure, or, or maybe you are using a, a sort of a number of different sort of cloud setups, then then Vault really kind of comes into its own because it's that singular workflow that the the application security team can kind of manage all of those secrets in one in one location. Oh, okay. And um, uh, Tom, walk me through a little bit about just the setup. If I want to start using Vault, mm -hmm. what, what are, what's step one? Okay, so, well, Vault is a is in a piece as a piece of software is 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 relatively complex if you want to run a sort of production setup. Okay. The the application itself is a single binary, but I think it's a bit disingenuous to say that you just take a single binary and you just run it. Um, you know that that's great. That'll give you a, a great Vault dev setup that you can use to play around with in thirty seconds. But it's not really going to give you a sort of a production hardened approach. I would say by far the if you're new to Vault. I would say by far the easiest way to get to get up and running is to either use um, the, the sort of the HashiCorp cloud um, version of Vault, which which can be kind of integrated into Azure. Or alternatively, if you're using Kubernetes, then you can install Vault using the uh, the, the Helm chart. And what the Helm chart will do is it will bootstrap Vault for you with all the required TLS certificates that are needed to to be able to obviously secure the transport. It'll it'll configure the the sort of um, the the initial authentication method mechanisms for you, um, and and also the 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 data storage. And this is kind of like a, a a key thing. I think there's two key components that you need to think about when you're using Vault. The first is all of the data inside of Vault is encrypted. There is a, a kind of a, a we call it it's an unseal key. And what the unseal key does is um, if if the Vault server uh, needs to restart, then Vault will will kind of can't can't unencrypt its own database, and that's so that you can't just take a Vault and attach it to a different data store. So you need to provide it the unseal key. 
So this is a thing you've got to keep safe and secure. Now, that is a kind of um, is, is kind of just one thing. Like it's it's manageable, but it's something you need to learn. I think with the the data store as well, like we've made the data storage in Vault like vastly simple, simpler over over the years. Um, previously, it would be dependent on an external data store like console or, or um, you know sort of cloud storage or something like that. But now you can use inbuilt storage with with kind of Raft DB, which means that uh, it's it's a much sort of simpler form of storage. You can just put it inside of a store that on a PVC or something. Um, but, but yeah, I would, I would recommend anybody who looks at Vault and says, you know, this is an interesting tool. I want to kind of kick the tires on this. Just try the, the HashiCorp cloud version or try the, uh, the, the, the Kubernetes version. It'll get you up and running in, in a sort of production ready way immediately. And then you can kind of start learning the sort of the, the complexities of the tool around, um, the, the, the sort of the, the replication and data storage and things like that. Because the, the key thing to remember is your application is depending on Vault. If your secrets are coming out of Vault and Vault isn't available, you don't have an application. Right. So you, it, it's, it's a real important thing to bear in mind that, that Vault is, a, if you're using Vault for your secrets, it's, it's probably going to be a pivotal piece of your, your application infrastructure. And you've got to, you've got to sort of take, treat it with respect from that regard, I guess. Well, how do you address that? That uh, is there high availability built into Vault, or do we need to configure that ourselves? Um, well, so Vault has a number of different um, methods that you can kind of do. So you've you've got the sort of the basic clustering. You can have a number of Vault servers now in okay. its kind of basic setup. The the Vault servers are kind of running as a as an active standby approach. Got it. So, so in the instance that say. Yeah, yeah. So, like, say a machine gets flooded, if it's for whatever reason you have issues or it it gets restarted, then you put those kind of vault clusters behind a load balancer, and then you know the load balancer can kind of automatically switch over to an active. Uh, sorry, um, vault will automatically reallocate an active, and it'll, the load balancer can then target that. You you've also got the ability to have kind of like a multi cluster setup, so that you can actually have like um, a number of different clusters. Uh, so you can actually have a whole cluster, which is kind of a standby. And that that's a sort of an enterprise feature. Um, and there's also performance replication because in some instances, if you're using Vault very, very heavily, specifically around things like transit secrets to, to encrypt arbitrary information, then you kind of, you can only sort of scale that up. Uh, horizontally, as as uh, sort of in terms of like the the machine is so far, and then you need to start bringing in additional clusters which are working active active in order to be able to to deliver the the throughput. But that I mean that's a pretty kind of extreme scale case. It it's fairly efficient at, at doing what it needs to do um, just on a a normal server. Okay, it seems like Vault has a lot of different options, a lot of decision points that I, as the developer or administrator, need to make. And you mentioned that some of it is fairly complex. What, where do I go to learn more? So we have um, the developer portal at, at HashiCorp, so developer at HashiCorp.com. You'll find the, the documentation there. So all of the, obviously, all of the documentation around Vault itself, the, the Vault's API, um, the, the various different secrets engine, but you'll also find there that we we have a lot of tutorials, um, walkthroughs. So if you want to kind of learn how to cluster a Vault server, what are the kind of the, the, the things involved in, in doing that? Because if you want to run it yourself, then there are tutorials which will walk you through uh, walk you through that. The concepts around the sort of the varying clustering models, the performance replication models, and things like that are, are also on developer.hashicorp. It's like I have to say, like you know, it. it uh, there's probably a lot of people who are thinking, oh my God, this thing is going to be beyond complex. It's it's not a, a simple tool. It's a security tool. So like the, there are things that you have to do which are somewhat complex because it, you know, it, it, it's just the nature of a lot of security, but it's not unwieldy. Like the, I think the, the sort of, it's very, you go through the, the, the basics of understanding the sort of authentication and the policy and, and some of the administrative features 
you can get on board fairly, fairly quickly. But um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not going to kind of say, yeah, it's easy, you know, just download a binary <laughs> in 30 seconds, you'll be an expert. To totally. I, I think what you're saying is that the, the complexity in the tool is a direct result of the fact that security itself this is a complex topic. That there are bad so. guys out there yeah. trying to hack in and we, we're trying to stay ahead of them. And it's, <laughs> yeah, and, and, it's, and it's, this is happening all the time. And, and I think some of the, the sophisticated methods that, that people are coming up with, it's, 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 it's remarkable. I mean, the, the sort of the, the latest one around um, uh, the sort of the, sort of the, the sort of the octa side of things where where folks actually compromise their support queues it, i mean it's 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 ingenious how yeah. how attackers actually even think about that as a as, as an approach but and it's going to continue you know like i mean octa do a fabulous job they're they're a, a great company as are great. a lot of companies who've been been sort of um attacked and compromised it's it's just a very difficult um in a constantly evolving, evolving world, and I think all you can really do is, is, is kind of try to keep wrapping your application in these layers of security, and, and kind of make best endeavors to, 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 um, to somewhat keep ahead. But, but certainly with with like secrets, if you're running kind of short-lived secrets, then even if a secret becomes compromised, if it if it leaks, um, you know, there are varying ways. It doesn't have to be a hacker that leaks a secret. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I've committed secrets to GitHub by by accident. I mean, I just did it last uh, week. I accidentally yeah, did it. Now, now I get an email now whenever files, I right? do that. It's, my, my company nags me. And, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so easy to do. It's, it's like such an easy mistake to make. But but if you're using kind of t short TTL-based secrets, you can either easily revoke them. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the instance of my, you know, my Kubernetes authentication, I committed it to GitHub, but because I was using Vault to to dynamically generate those credentials, um they they were you know i could revoke them immediately i, I just went into to kind of vault and i'd kill the lease and then that's it the credentials might be in github but they're useless and uh, yeah even my, if my I company doesn't care that. they still send the email even that's even yeah and it's great and they should right because <laughs> it, it's it's remarkable how fast so you're like if the thing is right like if if you can get an email saying that you've committed secrets somewhere before you even realize that you've done it yeah there's probably an attacker out there who's got that exact same capability. Good it's point. almost like it's a, um, it, it's a real um, race, right? A and race I think some bottom. of the things that, yeah, right, yeah, well, yeah. The so like bottom. some of the things that HashiCorp are investing in around sort of secrets management is, is that we, we, we sort of acquired a company, Blue Bracket, like last, uh, was it last year, earlier on this year? We want to be able to find those secrets that you've accidentally committed before, before, before anybody else does, because then we can automate that, that that whole process. You can tie it into Vault. You can actually revoke the the credentials if oh, I hadn't really thought of that. Be by, right. Yeah. So I think that's that's something that we're we're sort of quite excited to to kind of look at down down the line to to just make it because security is very very difficult. It, it's it's incredibly difficult. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but um, I think the more tooling you can use the more automation you can use and just kind of the, the, the sort of it, it makes you a little bit um it's always about just kind of pushing the margins i think a little a little further every time uh one other question i have is um you mentioned the hashicorp cloud you can host it there and you said something about how it it could be configured to work with azure is that does that mean that you could yeah. have it hosted in azure or is it hosted? Do you have your own cloud you're hosting it in, uh, and do you host in other clouds as well? What's how does that work? Yeah, so so we basically manage it for you, but it's it's running. Um, it, it's not it's not running on your your machines. We we kind of will will run it in in say Azure for you, and then what you can do is you can connect your network to to the network that that we we're running sort of um, Vault in for you. Now, by by doing that, you you get basically all the benefits of running it yourself. You you get the ben benefits that it is a, a sort of a single tenancy setup. There's mm. there's no noisy neighbors. You don't have to worry about the the, the sort of the, the neighbor security of a, of a kind of a, a SaaS based setup. It is literally your own 
fault setup that we just kind of make sure that the backups and the patches and, and everything like that are applied on. Um, and we, we kind of do that um, sort of, you know, we have, we have the experience around kind of managing this thing. Cause we, I mean, we, we, we actually built vault as an internal tool for ourselves. Uh, vault was originally a tool which was built because we needed a way to manage secrets in Terraform cloud. And there wasn't a tool out there. This is, you know, sort of, I would guess like eight years ago. Hmm. So internally we created vault and then we created, and we were like, hang on a second. Well, like this is useful to us. It's probably useful to, to other people. And uh, then obviously it, it kind of became a, a fully blown, blown product, but in essence, HashiCorp cloud, that's what you're getting. You're, you're basically getting your own virtual machines, which we will manage for you. We will patch, we will replace um, your own vault cluster. It's not a, it's not a, um, a sort of a multi-tenant setup. It's, it's um, fully, fully secured and specific just, just for you as an individual. Got it. Uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about on this topic that you feel is really important? Gosh, I mean, I could, I could kind of go on for ages. I think it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of surprising when, uh, when you sort of start digging into it. I would say, like, <clears throat> I think the whole concept of, of zero trust is is really, really important. It's, it's. The, I'll be honest. Like, I'm an application developer. I look at a lot of this stuff, and I'm just like, it's the last thing I want to tackle. I have enough to do but at the same time i think that the sort of the it's never been more important to to tackle these things and i think when you you put the effort in to sort of learn about the varying different tools out there and it doesn't have to be vault right like it, it's about just using say azure key vault and, and using something like that but using it correctly you can do a lot to secure your your applications and, and mitigate any any potential risks because the um the damage that can be done is, is, is just huge these days. Agreed. Well, Nick, we're just about at time. So I want to thank you very much for your time. And uh, this has been really educational for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. <music>